Welcome to week three of reading Romans with the Reardons. We're on Romans 3. Um, So just to summarize what happened at the end of Romans 2, he was talking about how true circumcision is not just obeying the letter of the law and following the law. That's what the Jews did. That's what circumcision was before, but now it's a change of heart produced by God's Spirit. (coughs) Bless you. Thank you. And a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. Uh, So then we'll start off with verse 3. Sorry, chapter 3. I keep doing that. that. (laughs) Whatever. Okay, here we go. Chapter 3. Then what's the advantage of being a Jew? Is there any value in the ceremony of circumcision yes there are great benefits first of all the jews were entrusted with the whole revelation of god true some of them were unfaithful but just because they were unfaithful does that mean god will be unfaithful of course not even if everyone else is a liar god is true as the scriptures say about him you will be proved right in what you say and you will win your case in court i love that like just because we're unfaithful is god unfaithful like no Like, even if we lie, does God lie? No. Like, he doesn't change. (laughs) Like, it's such a human thing to, like, stoop to kind of the other person's low, I guess, in a way. And so that's just encouraging that God's God's not a stooper. Is that a word? Uh, Yes, but not in that context. Oh, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) That's not what I meant. Okay, you know what I mean. Um... Verse 5, but some might say our sinfulness serves a good purpose, for it helps people see how righteous God is. Isn't it unfair then for him to punish us? This is merely a human point of view. Of course not. If God were not entirely fair, how would he be qualified to judge the world? But someone might still argue How can God condemn me as a sinner if my dishonesty highlights his truthfulness and brings him more glory? And some people might even slander us by claiming that we say, the more we sin, the better it is. Those who say such things deserve to be condemned. Uh, So in here, it, I feel like it pretty well speaks for itself uh, that yes, when we sin god can still use it for good Mm -hmm. god can use bad things evil things for good but that doesn't mean that we should purposely do bad things or not worry about doing good things because like eh, whatever god can use it for however he needs to he can twist it and do his god thing you know but that is not what we're called to do. Yeah. That is not living a life of thanks for what God has done for us. Right, and I think, I mean, it's super important to understand like how big of a sinner I am, to understand how big of a savior he is. Like That is really important to, to wrestle with sin and, and to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us our sin more and more and to um, let God's word penetrate our sin. Um, but at the same time, experiencing his grace should cause me to change my thinking, change my habits, want to be more like him, give him all of myself and all of me. And like, that's kind of the, um, oh, I'm not going to get it wrong. Am I sanctifying? Yeah. Sanctifying is like becoming more and more like Christ throughout my life. Like we've been saved. We understand the sin. We understand the daily sin that we still um, go through, but we are like the Holy Spirit is making us new um, every day. And the, um, let's see, I just wanted to make sure you didn't talk yet because I had something else to say. Uh, <laughs> do you oh, remember what you were and saying? I do now, yeah, okay. thank you. Uh, <laughs> the The good that we do is also not that great compared to God. We're going to fail in our doing good and in our trying to do that. So don't worry, your weakness in doing good is still going to glorify God and point to his truthfulness and his perfection and holiness. So 
try to do good and God's still going to get glorified through it. All right. Next section, just a heads up, the uh the added heading of it later is called all people are sinners. So, just buckle up. All right, verse 9. Well then, should we conclude that we Jews are better than others? No, not at all, for we have already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, are under the power of sin. As the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good, not a single one. Their talk is foul, like the stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with lies. Snake venom drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rush to commit murder. Destruction and misery always follow them. They don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. Obviously, the law applies to those whom it was given, for its purpose is to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before God, for no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. Have you had snake venom drip from your lips? Not lately, at least that I can remember. And not literally, but figuratively. Mm. Yeah, this um, this reminds me of what I mentioned last week about the expectation to like, hey, jump as high as you can and hit the wall. Like, well, actually the expectation is to jump and touch the moon, which obviously all of us are so far away from doing. So that kind of reminds me of like the law simply shows us how sinful we are. The standard that God set and is like, hey, this is what life should look like and how you should live it is is pretty high and we are so far away from that in that um just yeah to reveal to us our sin with that um standard I think is helpful even though it doesn't feel very good I feel kind of like a broken record in saying this probably each week so far but I think this is just incredibly freeing knowing that we are all in the same boat we are all completely um, unrighteous, that no one is righteous, not even one. Okay, we're, we're all put in our place. We're, we're not jumping very close to the moon at all. Uh, and the sense that that is so freeing is that you don't need to work and do good things and try to be the best person you can in order to earn freedom in order to earn salvation and God's grace and God's love because we can't (laughs) we are Mm -hmm. all doing so horribly with that we're all so full of sin but we are saved by God's grace and that is what is so freeing and then the the good works that we want to do is just out of thankfulness for God because we've already been saved we don't need to work for that salvation. So mm-hmm. now, now I said that for the third week. So Well, I think Paul's a broken record too because he's just going to keep having True. that same yeah. message and as well. And then we'll keep bringing it up. Yeah, that reminds me of what you were just saying of Psalm 46 verse 10 um, that says, like, stop your anxious striving. Like, you can't, like, striving isn't going to get you anywhere. You're not going to be able to earn your salvation Um, and so like you are saying that is so freeing that God's like just rest you can't Mm -hmm. you can't make it you can't touch the moon on your own right so verse 21 but now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Can I say something real quick? Yeah. Um, just the reference to like the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago, when we look at like the different, I don't know, the different ways to, to understand Christianity and think that it's valid, like one of the things that is just so telling to me is to look back into Isaiah for all the prophecies that Christ fulfilled is just like 
so encouraging in times when my faith feels super wimpy. It's like, you know what? <laughs> like, people wrote about this, that this was going to happen before. Like, they had no idea that this was going to happen hundreds of years before. And, and it came true. So, that's my just little caveat. Mm-hmm. You can keep reading. I like what how this starts out but like but now god has shown a way for us to be made right with him because he sets it up before as this problem of right like all right i gave this law on how to be made right how to be my holy people and they can't do it yep nobody's (laughs) able to do it everybody's completely failing so that's not good news for us but then this one starts out all right here's the solution to the problem Mm -hmm. okay good this is where it is because things were sounding pretty bad pretty dire so uh verse 23 for everyone has sinned we all fall short of god's glorious standard yet god with undeserved kindness which i believe some translations say in in god's grace. grace which grace is a great word but I also like undeserved kindness. Mm -hmm. That just defines it a little more. It's beautiful. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he declares sinners to be right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. I feel like we need an amen in here. Absolutely. That's what I was thinking. I don't know. I I feel like I could either not talk about this passage at all just because it's like, nope, that just says Says perfectly all all it needs to say, or I could just talk about this for a long time. (laughs) It's like either one because I either need to dig into everything and rejoice in that and and talk about that or just let it be. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is definitely like verse 23 through... Uh, like the first half of 25 is worth like writing down or rereading or, or putting yeah. somewhere, memorizing that, just being like, this is it. Yep. If you need anything, it's right here. This reminds me too of um, the Jesus Storybook Bible, mm-hmm. the kids' Bible that um, our former youth pastor gave to us. And we ended up using it for our personal devotions, even though it was a kid's Bible. Mm-hmm. And what's so beautiful about it is that every every Bible story points to Christ. I mean, it's called the Jesus Storybook Bible, which all of the stories in the Bible point to Christ, but it so explicitly sets it up. And what I love in there, too, is that it talks about um, God's rescue plan, right? Isn't that the language yeah. that it uses? Mm-hmm. And that it's like God had this plan. Like, he set up, hey, we've got an issue. Y'all are sinners, but... But he's got a plan. He's had the plan for forever um, to find a way to bring us broken people into relationship with him, a perfect God. Like broken and perfect can't go together, but he he figured out a way and gave it all up. He gave everything up so that we could be in relationship with him. And it's just the most beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. It's a good Bible. Good book. All right. Verse 27. Can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by God? No, because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. So we are made right with God through faith and not by obeying the law. After all, is God the God of the Jews only? Isn't he also the God of the Gentiles? Of course he is. There's only one God and he makes people right with him himself only by faith, whether they are Jews or Gentiles. Well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. I don't remember if it was this week already or last week that I was talking about that. It might have been last week. Um, about the law and how 
the law is still necessary. It points out our sin. It um, is not like Christ came. Now we don't need that at all. That's toast. Um, no, Christ fulfilled that law. He supports that. He he came and met everything that was in there, and and essentially gives that to us. That 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 was his sacrifice. Um, yeah, so that's one of the things I have to say on that. I think I want to comment here on the faith piece of it because he all of a sudden brings in like it's all about faith, 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 and like. What does it actually mean to have faith? Well, like first and foremost, it means to believe that God exists and that he's the living God, that he's not this watchmaker who, you know, built the world and set it up to run and then he's dusted his hands off and he's out. Like he's the living God, he's present. Um, and then to believe that Jesus died for our sins. Um, and then I love the verse... Um, I think it's in Hebrews, to be sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Is that in Hebrews? It's in the Bible. I know that. Um, yeah, sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. That reminds me of um, this metaphor that I've had for a long time that just makes its way into lots of different contexts in my life. And it's about a tapestry and how you think of someone who weaves a tapestry the back side of this tapestry has all these knots and that's kind of like the side of life that we're living on. We see the knots and things don't really make sense. But on the other side of this tapestry is this gorgeous um, art, this gorgeous weaving into some picture or design that's gore that's beautiful. And I feel like that's kind of what it is to have faith is to trust that wow, all I'm seeing right now, God, are knots, and I don't see how this is adding up to anything, and I don't understand how you're working in this situation, but I am going to trust and have faith that you're making something beautiful out of this, and that um, we do get glimpses of the beauty a lot of times in life, um, but not all the time, and I feel like that's another piece of faith, is trusting that the knots um, are, that God is using that for making something beautiful. Mm-hmm. Good word. You got anything to say in closing? Just, I don't know if you listening, like, just feel energized, but I just feel so energized going through this and just setting it up like, wow, sin, sin, we can't touch the moon, so much sin. And then it's like, Christ took our punishment, God had a way. I'm just feeling so much more alive and um, uh, feeling the joy of that, I guess, right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. We'll stay tuned next week for Romans 4. Bye, everybody.